everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your Arch Sherpa, and I am coming to you tonight because I'm going to show you how you can paint step by step this fabulous, really gorgeous kind of galactic landscape scene. So you guys voted on a bunch of images that I threw up earlier, and the one with the most votes won. This was it. We're going to be doing it. Oh, I think we'll be able to get the whole lesson done tonight. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey, guys. He's going to be helping me with this lesson by switching cameras making sure you guys are in the action, like deep down in the bristles of the brush, seeing how the colors are mixed, seeing how the techniques are done. This is actually more beginner friendly than you might think. And I'm really gonna break it down and explain it to you. We're gonna demo uh, how to use a fan brush correctly, but I'm also gonna show you what you could do if you didn't have a fan brush. And we're gonna also demo some other brushes with some alternative techniques to get similar results because generally in art there isn't one way through a uh, little heads up and it kind of is why we were a bit like late today um there's been a bunch of changes on facebook and also on other video platforms and the first thing that i want to say is if you're gonna emoji emoji carefully mm -hmm. <laughs> because right now there's a bunch of accounts that get banned for emojis the system is trying to figure out what it's supposed to do and so it's banning kind of like all emojis so, so yeah just, i was just emoji with caution is what i would say it's, especially in text it seems like yeah your likes those are seeming to be just fine it's when you use those in text emojis you, that it you seems know the ones be... that i use non-stop that i have been like all like just trying not to use i was like going back through and you know, and it's innocent stuff, too. It's just the systems being very glitchy, and it's not just here. It's also on our other platform, YouTube, mm -hmm. so it's sort of a general thing. And there's a bunch of changes that are kind of rough on us creators and kind of rough on you viewers, but probably are for the good in the long run, which is just making sure that videos like ours are more compliant to all members of the family. And I think that's important, so I support it, but it's a rough growth. <laughs> we're, we're working it out. We're working it out. Uh, if there's anything that relates to you, we'll try to keep you guys informed on it so you know exactly what's going on. And I'm kind of ready to just jump on in this lesson because I need this relaxed tonight, like really bad. I get it. Do you? Oh, yeah. I so need it. There are, there are times when I'm just like, man, I really need to relax. So let's hop on in and I'll talk right. about the materials and what we're going to be doing. And then we'll just start painting it. There's my reference. You guys have a picture in picture. And I posted this up in the comments earlier so you could print it out for yourself. This is an 11 by 14 artboard. You could do this on any size surface. This is just what I'm using tonight because I like this size. I have some wishes and intentions on my canvas. Um, this is done in watercolor pencil so I can paint it away and it won't come through the paint. And my wishes is for everyone, for kindness to be the rule, for well being for all, and abundance for all. So just that sort of like goodness and okayness especially through the holiday season because it's definitely a time for all of us now i'm going to start out and i'm going to do the easiest thing in the world mm. it's the easiest thing in the world john put your paint out i'm gonna paint the canvas blue <laughs> Ooh. it's just yes it's that simple so this is phthalo blue i've listed the colors in the description of this video, everything that I would be using, I picked uh, images for you guys to vote on that used all the same colors. So all you got to do is kind of check those, but you can use approximations. Don't feel like, oh my gosh, I don't have that exact color, that you can't do it because it will be just fine. It's, a, it's not one of those kinds of paintings where if you have a slightly different blue than me, your whole painting is just ruined. <gasps> I don't really know what kind of painting that painting would be, but if there it's, were that kind of painting, this is definitely not it. This is not that one. No. Now, this first layer of phthalo blue is a little bit streaky, and some of that is just the nature of phthalo blue being somewhat transparent as a pigment. Mm. But it's okay for us. We just want that first depth of color so that when we build up our wonderful space scene, we have this blue as a base. And this is always a good beginning on a surface because if you're really new to painting, you know you've got the first layer, right? Mm-hmm. It's a blue layer. You got this one. So you're like, yeah, I can get this part of the layer. And really, they're all like this. They're just different little ways of getting the brush to do things. 
on the surface of the canvas. Seriously, if this is all there was to painting, I could do this. It is when you're Wiley Coyote. <laughs> <laughs> That's about my level of painting. I really want to get that brush and paint he has from the Acme Company because that's shoo, shoo, some shoo. wild stuff. And some... also, I agree, he's been very unrecognized for his work in tunnels. It's Dude, there's some good perspective work. He, he is quite an accomplished artist. Many, many works, public installations were done. Talk about, like, and... master that one stroke. <laughs> it was one stroke. He was the original master of one stroke. Oh, no. You know what I've just realized, John? We fall down. I have a lot of Wiley e. Coyote jokes in the back pocket. I didn't <laughs> even know we're sitting there waiting to bubble up. <laughs> That's awesome. So for those of you at home, I'm sorry. I'm going to drop my <laughs> canvas now. All right. <sighs> so you guys who are just joining us and have never heard my spiel on uh, hair dryers, here comes. So. Hair dryers when it should be used without heat, used on cool, because heat isn't good for paint. Paint causes color, uh, heat causes color shift. It causes uh, your paint to get soft because it's an acrylic, which is a sort of basic it's plastic. Um, at the end of the day, it's an acrylic, so uh, it softens with heat. It also it causes chemical reactions to happen in kind of funny ways. So make sure you don't use heat because that'll cause it to shift color especially in student paints it's not so bad in pro paints but uh it's just best best practice to not use heat it's helpful to not use heat i'm gonna put out some paint colors as i want to do i'm gonna put out some quinacridone magenta a color i very much like to use when painting space good color for space i'm gonna also add a little bit of cadmium yellow out here just so that i can warm uh, a little bit of the quin and a little bit of the phthalo turquoise I'm about to make. I'm going to add some more phthalo blue to my smeary smear of phthalo blue. For those of us that have a smeary smear. <laughs> I may have to have John go get my fluid paint. I think I forgot my fluid white, my fluid black back at the black at the other uh, painting station. So I'll put out the white. Can you, uh, when you get a chance to break free, can you go grab me the white, babe? Yeah, it's over where we were painting earlier. So, um, I paint several different stations, uh, throughout our studio. And what happens then is that materials are left at various stations. And we, we got some news that we had to change some settings on our channel. It was like very dramatic. And, uh, <laughs> I got super distracted by the drama, I gotta tell you. So I put out some titanium white. But I also wanted John to grab some fluid paint. And what I mean by that, these are soft body or sometimes called fluid paints. But basically what it is, is this is stiff and holds its shape. And this is self-leveling. And it splatters a little bit easier than um, paint that you've got to thin and then splatter, which can get a little bit stringy. I've got a whole video on how to splatter better because, like, it's like one of those weird techniques that like at first when you try to do it can be really aggravating. But then as you get used to it, it's really kind of fun. Mm. Now I'm going to take my chalk. This is regular kid's chalk. And I'm going to determine that I have a celestial object up here that we're going to say is moonish. Before John starts criticizing my moon uh, patterns as he's wont to do. It's okay. It's okay when he does that. We've been married like 20 you know, bazillion to years. So... Uh all I have to say... I know where his food is, so I don't mind. Is That's no moon. <laughs> You're a problem. <laughs> now, we have a galactic kind of beautiful Milky Way arm. It's a bit in the fantasy scape, but it kind of comes up like that in our shape. And so we're going to have some very bright greens and stuff down here. And then through here, there'll be some magentas and warm colors. And up here, we're going to deepen it with like our purple and stuff. And we can actually start pat practicing some of the softness that we're going to be using. I'm going to grab... Dum, da, da, dum, da, dum. Let's get this number 12 silver stone round. This is a bristle brush, and the bristles kind of all flag inwards. I will have to wipe the water out of it kind of regularly, but it does do a nice job. Oh, oh i got to put out Doc's purple and tell you all the colors, I think flustered today they flustered me with their news all right dox is in purple quinacridone magenta thalo blue thalo green 
had yellow medium and titanium white. Plus we'll be using some of this fluid paint later uh, to do the trees and stuff. But again, you could use a Amer you know, deco art or you could use like golden, either would be okay. And I'm gonna just start out getting some docks purple and I might grab some of my phthalo blue and I'm gonna come up here and begin to put in some of these deeper values. And here where I know I'm gonna have some galactic stuff, I'm gonna use the edge of the bristles, you see, to make uneven edges so I can build up some space junk. You're creating some galactic background radiation. Yes, space junk. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I like it. So I don't really like to use just pure black in space scenes. Um, I think that you can, and there's nothing wrong with it, but I sort of enjoy the depth we get by layering up the doxazine purple and phthalo blue. It's a personal preference. Space has a lot of light in it. Well, it does when we artists represent it. <laughs> no, it just does. It's full of photons whisking around. Go photons. Paint your photons, yo. As you are wont to do. Which brush is that? This is a number 12 Silverstone. What it is is a nice big fluffy brush Yeah. that is resilient to my paint. In other words, it holds up fairly well and is able to push my paint around all across the canvas. I can kind of do these nice little scumbly motions with it. And that gives me lots of soft effects, even when I'm not yet blending. And that's what I'm really wanting to go for is some soft effects way before I even start to blend. Now I'm going to rinse it out quite well. Quite well, I say. Quite well. Quite well, I say. And I'm going to come in here and get a little bit of my phthalo blue and some titanium white, just to sort of begin with. And I'm going to come back up and begin the sort of very faded bit of our little galactic radiation that John is, was talking about. If no. your brush is too wet, sometimes it won't give you those really nice fades that you're looking for. So it's about just making sure that it's not holding too much water. And uh, you don't want to have too much white in the paint either. This is a subtle transition. Lorraine asks a really Hi, good Lorraine, question. Hi, Lorraine. How are you this evening? So she, she asked, wouldn't it be easier just to start off with a black surface? Well, it can be a way to do that. And I could demo how you do a space scene starting off with a black surface. You do have to do things a little bit differently when you start from black. There's a lot of painting in your light with white first and then coming back with your bright colors. And that's if you really like that deep black space look, hmm. which, you know, is perfectly good. And I'm throwing no shade at, but this, this, is will, different this will be more, if you'll notice this picture is quite luminous. Notice the luminosity to the picture? Yeah. So that can be a little bit harder to represent in paint, right? Now I could do a lot of things. I could get into some neon colors. That works pretty well. But it can be helpful to just layer up like this. Not to mention if you're just trying to de-stress the day, this is where that good de-stressing is. That good de-stressing. And you want that good de-stressing. Well, I do right now. I don't really need it. Not as de stressed the Sherpa and I. I like it. You like it? I do. Now, John tends to keep all space paintings. He gets very attached to them. So he's always excited when I paint space. It's true, I do. I'm going to add some more purple back here at these outer edges, you know, in the depths of space. And Holly. Hi, asked, Holly. She asked a really good question, but I'm going to wait until you're, you're getting a little, you get some coverage, and then I'll, I'll, I'll put, it, put it up for you. Okay. I like that. Good questions are good questions. You can see I'm just layering this up and this brush is just doing a nice job. You can find big fluffy brushes in all kinds of locations. You know, I really love this one, but I was just in Michael's and saw that uh, the Simply Simmons had a very similar brush. Hmm. So, you know, hey, and it was, it was like inexpensive, you know, so just go for what you can do. Well, the thing about the hog bristle brushes, all you're really looking for is they shouldn't shed all over your canvas. 
You've got to wash them right when you get them home thoroughly with uh, soap and water and pull those extra hairs out so you don't get shedding when you're painting. But once you do that, you're good. And I just, I just can't stop building up these little rich layers of, of color, but that's True. pretty good. I'm going to rinse out like you do. Like you do, maybe. Like somebody do. Like somebody do, 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 do. Now I'm going to um, take an artist knife. Mm -hmm. palette knife and i'm going to mix a little bit of my phthalo blue and my phthalo green together kind of in a one-to-one -one ratio and that makes a phthalo turquoise you can buy this color sometimes called southern ocean blue uh, with matisse paint and in most uh company lines called phthalo turquoise super yeah. viable very viable and we're going to paint kind of a nice little ombre of that coming up here and then I will likely come back with a little bit of white so when I come in with the pink, it's bright. Yeah. But first, we got to work these little deals out. So, get my brush wet. I'm going to come here and make sure that my seam has some blue paint to blend into. Because we're going to need to make a blend, guys. Are you ready for it? Mm-hmm. And you're going to really love that we did this blue painting ahead of time because <laughs> it's going to really help with all that. So when I'm doing this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some white, and I'm going to get it right into my turquoise. Such a gorgeous, gorgeous color. And I'm going to begin to pull this up into my sky, wiggling again on this little brush. And I'm wiggling it. I'm going to wiggle it just a little bit. That's going to happen. I'm going to make that joke a lot. I apologize. Apologize, apologize, apologize. Can't help it. But you can see this is creating this sort of softness, right? And something that I can really do, like I want to get some more turquoise in there and I, and I want more softness, I can always come in with a blending brush and watch this. This is, this is, they call this an ultimate varnish, but what it is is a synthetic mop. And I can come along here with this dry brush. You could use any soft dry brush that you have. And look at me soften those values, those clouds. I'm going to get a little yellow into this mix and still play in the white. And I'm going to add these little bits of color here and there. And so what was the question you wanted to ask me while I'm going? Just touching a bit of this around. See, touch, 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 touch. I had my microphone turned off there because the Dog was over here snar snarfling underneath my table, so I was trying to find out what the noise was. Soft. Awesome. You're my favorite. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. I get very excited for a soft blend. I really do. The soft blends are pretty awesome. Just so yummy. And that brush is really helping you get that... Yeah, it lets me get the irregular kind of application in, which is important. And then on top of that, right, I use the soft brush to soften those things. And it's going to be about capturing our hard and soft edges throughout this piece. I don't intend to use any neon paint. Hmm. I'm going to get some, some dark values into here, too. As you would want. Like I'm just randomly putting those around. Okay, so you were, uh, you were asking? Oh, great. So, uh, if you wanted to have a gnome deliver a message when we went live by text, how could you do that? Well, you would have to sign up for it because we're not pushy. No? So you would go onto your phone, your mobile phone, and it, you would go to your message system on your mobile phone and into the number 33222. That's the number you would send the message to. You send the word, the Art Sherpa, all one word. And then we'll tell you when we're live. Mm. And that's all it takes. That's all it takes. We can do that. Could they do that? I think we could do that. Well, there you go. I'm going to get a little bit of my yellow into this mix here. And I'm going to begin to place this lighter value down here. While everything is still wet. See, I'm just loosely kind of randomly putting that out. All those little randomy colors. I 
everything is still wet right here. So I rinse this brush out. I have dried it just with a towel and I'm going to come in and soften these as well. Now, when these are a little bit wet, they'll do what you're seeing there. So sometimes you've got to back your pressure off the brush or switch brushes. But I know sometimes we don't have like five or six brushes to be like switching brushes every three seconds. Like, I'll do it at home though. I have enough brushes where I'll be switching. But you don't have to switch brushes like that. But see how we're getting this very soft out of focus in a cloud event? Mm -hmm. Now again, if you want that completely soft though, right? Here. This is a da -da 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 artist loft mop. You just come back with a dry soft brush. I don't ever want to give the impression that you've got to have just one or it's done, if that makes sense. But once I rinse that out and dry that out, it's going to do the secondary blend that I was showing you there until it's all the way dry. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to have a couple of them around. And when I'm painting alone and I, and, and like if I only brought a couple brushes with me, sometimes what I'll do is I'll dry them between uses with the hairdryer. You're That's creative. Okay. You're an artist, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a thing. It's a whole thing. So you I'm going to make it. sure this one is rinsed out thoroughly of pigment and dry it out. And then I'm going to take my wonderful scumbly brush and rinse it out a bit, as you might want to do. And I'm going to come through with a little bit of white through the center here. All right. So we're going to come through here. And I'm just tapping that, that out, right? It's just pure white. And look, I'm just tapping that out a few places. I'm letting the, look at this hot mess of a brush. If you ever feel like you got to have a super detail, that's when people are like, I'm going to throw that brush out. And I'm like, don't. Mm. No, because it's now your ultimate galaxy flower brush. And I'm just tapping this out. Now I have to move quickly enough that this doesn't dry on me. Totally all the way, right? Mm-hmm. Because that's where, that's where I would lose some of it. Little weirdness. I'll rinse out there. And I think it's still pretty dry. I will use this one that I had from earlier. And I'm going to just soften it a bit through here. And then I'll come back with another brush that I will soften it a bit with too. You can sometimes come through with almost a circular but you don't want to make little clouds. You're just trying to soften the space junk. Get your galaxy on. All right. I've got that through there. How do I get it softer? I can come back maybe with this mop, see if it's dry enough to do it. And if it's not, I'll have to get a totally dry brush. But hopefully what you're seeing is it soften out. A lot of times what people really struggle with in acrylic is getting those soft edges. Yeah. But once you figure out how you're going to get them, then you are really set. Because you can do a lot of cool stuff with a soft edge, which we're starting to do. We're starting to do. We're starting to get some soft edges in there. I like to put in a little bit of highlight here and there, you know, because you have those brighter white spots that can show up in your nebula-like things. I think this is an arm of the Milky Way, though, isn't it? Mm, could be. Are you going to get all, like, that's not accurately astronomically? That's an artist rendering? Because sometimes John does that. He's like, that's not a real thing. It's a... <laughs> like, it was real to me. It Getting I'm sure brush. I'm sure those were stars taken from the sky, but they have been rearranged in such a way that they no longer resemble clearly one object. So Over to another speak. object? Is that what we're saying? This is a cool gaseous anomaly. Look at that get soft. All right. 
oh, every time I drive one of these, I'm like, it's one down. But we get to do something very cool here. If you remember, we had worked that blue up there in layers. Mm. Tougher to do if we were all just in the black. But I'm going to load up with some phthalo turquoise. And I'm going to come in and make this edge very uneven, if I may. If you will hang in with me while I do. And then I'm going to have to splatter some stars here pretty soon. All right. Hopefully this isn't that like dry yet. Yeah. And again, I'm always trying to race the values of dampness on my painting. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that's doing it. So even though this is a little bit damp, we're still getting a nice blend, aren't we? Very sp spacey blend. Works best if the paint is still wet. But we're trying for that almost digital look with our artwork here. You know, to get that almost digital space that we can get if we can work these things out. Pulling a little of that. Now, sometimes I can even come in with a little bit of like a color on one of these fluffy brushes and deepen it, as you can see me doing here. Like if I want to come in with a little turquoise on the brush, I can add it softly. What? Yeah. Look how big that brush is. And yet I'm still adding some soft. soft. I do personally, as an acrylic artist, prefer for a synthetic mop or overwash or any of these soft blenders to goat hair. Mm. I have strong feelings about this. I have great goat hair brushes. They're fantastic. But they aggravate the heck out of me when I'm trying to do these type of blends. I'm always like, man, this is not, not the droids I was going for. I'm going to take this here. What is that there? This is still my, oh, the, well, this one is called an ultimate varnish, and I do love these. Um, it's basically just a, just an oval mop. I'm going to come in at first with some yellow. Just at first, and I'm just, you can see I'm just softly using this to get a little bit of a glow, right? Mm -hmm. A little bit of a transition. We need a little glow. And we got to get some magenta in there or we're not going to feel like we had the fun we wanted to have. I know I won't. No, you won't. You'll be super disappointed, I'm telling you. And you can always come in with a paper towel and take off any extra paint you're worried is going to be too much. I'm just going to add a little bit of this. Magenta, blended, coming back, look at that, isn't that fun? A little too much pink, so I'm going to get some white and I can pick up some yellow in it, I like that. Let's uh, add a little bit of pink up here, sort of in that cloud. That makes a crazy shape, right? Mm-hmm. Rinse it out. Either get it back to dry or have a bazillion D like the clown car brushes. <laughs> Fresh caddy as I have. But that's what I would do. If I didn't have just a lot of brushes, I would just dry the brush, have a couple going. Sometimes I will enlist uh, my kids into being my studio assistants and help me they help me uh, not just paint but also like do stuff like dry the brushes and get those little elements worked out and that's important and I'll come back with some blue and I'll just go back and forth okay how we do I'm white. Put into there. 
So it'll start to get, even if it was dry, a little bit wet as you're doing this soft dusting kind of effect. Don't give up. Keep demanding. Mm. Until you're super happy. That's all space wants of you to be is happy. <laughs> I don't think space really cares, but well, let's pretend that it does. You know and what it wants of you is happiness, true happiness. Let's just say that in order for there to be observable space, there must be observers. This has been the conversation at my house all day. I'm going to get a little yellow and a little white for this part right here. See how that does? Mm -hmm. And I just play with my nebula until my nebula is perfect. That's what I would do. Yeah, that's what you do. Just There's no, there's no like, you know, uh, it's cool that uh, Art Battle has a time, time sensitive kind of component, but in your own studio, you're not in an art battle. You're just painting, so. Keep it fun. You can see I'm just dusting this around, right? There we go, just dusting that around. Softly getting those little transitions too. Give you cloud forms without those super, super hard edges. I'm feeling pretty good about my spacing. Mm -hmm. My spacing is not bad. No, it's pretty good. Pretty good spacing. There could be some better spacing. Like now that I'm in here and I'm playing, I could get some purple and some white. That's some pretty shockingly good spacing. And then you add a little magenta to it. Really purple, though. I want it to read as purple. Get into the purple. There it is. Now, I know that we... There uh, we go. Look at that. I got some deep purple there. I know it can be confusing, but what you guys... It, we're gonna, when you, if you're wanting to sign up for the text message notification system, mm -hmm. you actually send the message the Art Sherpa Three to... Phone. To the phone number three three two two two. Yeah. So on your on your text on your voting phone. American Idol. Yeah. So Same thing. The phone number you're going to send it to is three three two two two, and the word you send is the Art Sherpa. And if you send that from your phone, um, then you'll get a little response message that says thank you for joining and signing up. If you want to stop getting these messages, say stop, and we'll stop. And we'll accept that. And we'll take. We'll do. It. We will. We'll we take no for an answer. It. We're we're nice people. But we'll also tell you every time we go live and maybe send you a picture and some inside notices when some cool stuff happens. But you know, just saying, no pressure. Don't sign up if you don't want to. Go sign up. Go sign up. It's really good. No pressure. No pressure. It helps though because we're gonna be doing more and more of the Facebook Live. Yep. So I am taking this. I know it looks like a toothbrush. You would never ever use this on your teeth. It has a very stiff filament in it. It's actually got the Sharpa white filament in it. And I'm going to use it in splatter. But listen, if you had a stiff toothbrush and you just did this basically, you would get a similar effect. I just have a little Ooh. easier time getting exactly my star particulate every time. That's why uh, this brush was important to me to make. Billions this is my first and field billions of stars. of stars. That's right. My first field. Because you got to have the smaller speckles and some more diminished speckles. I would say that was the only one that got away from me. Guess what I can do? And just take a brush and go, no, 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 no. You dusted that star. I did. I can just take it right out and be like, no. It was a little supernova. Gone. Yep. You just take it away. It's now a black hole. Now, here, I'm inclined to want to dry what I have so far so I can do the next layer of soft blending and build up that space scape. Because mm. I am not working in a digital media at all. So, that's right. Make sure you guys don't use heat. That's not good. It's cold in space. Got to make sure it stays cold. Don't use heat because it'll 
uh, mess that up. But oh, do make sure you thoroughly dry it because each of those little speckles, those little dots, they need to be pinpoints of light in space so they don't become comets later on when you're painting other things over the top of them. You don't want them to smear and get picked up in the, in the subsequent layers. So if you thoroughly dry them, make sure you use the uh, lowest heat setting, just air, and you'll be okay. So, yeah, there's the Sherpa. Yeah, turn uh, I'm getting my, I'm getting my towels on. You know how I know you're the Sherpa? How do you know I'm the Sherpa? You got a name tag. I do. See? Oh. I was thinking that it was that you were married to me, and you were here when we named the channel. Why, well, <laughs> so dude? All that stuff. You had easy. early information. I'm pulling the extra water out of my brushes so that I can do some blending with them because I think I'm down to my goat blenders. Yeah. And one last mop, so, you know, live demos are more challenging. Are they? Yeah, sometimes, but I like them better. Because you can see me really dealing. There's no, um, there's no edit. I'm going to do that cool thing that we did where we made the kind of cool little shape. And you can see now that pink is really popping. Isn't Indeed the pink really it is. popping? that through here as you might want to one of my very favorite purples is actually magenta and thalo turquoise so you can get some of that in there as well and that can be a very nice you'll notice there's some dark shapes that will permeate you know through the center of your cloud so it by saying this is one of your favorite purples which one don't you like? I'm not as fond of the purples that you get when colors have a hidden complement and so they dull out. The neutral mm. purples is not my is not my total favorite. I'm not throwing shade at them. I'm just saying it may not be my my specific thing that I you know necessarily. I get it. Would it's like want. the purple you get in a chromatic aberration. That's right. John likes to point those little things out. <laughs> well, I was just thinking, I, that's where I see him. So you can see I've added a little bit of um, for some dark values. I'm going to soften this, but I actually like some of that being not that soft. So now we're starting to play some hard edges and some soft edges against each other. That's really cool. That really made that cloud turn into, see, that's just like, bang, turned into like space. That's where we get our space from. Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Could be. Could be. <laughs> you know what I used to do when I was teaching parties? Because I paint a little faster generally than, you know, maybe a lot of my students coming in might paint. And so what I would do to fill the time is I would add objects to, like, you know, a Borg cube. Yeah. An enterprise. So I'm just taking the tip of this little brush, and I'm just adding these little, these little crazy values, right? These little cloud bits that are going on here. And I can see how they can add that. Look, I can just add that right there. And the brush being kind of a hot mess is just the best for that. But really, it's just about you find your tools and you get very centered in the marks that they make. And then you're like, I can do this. Now we're getting those little, those little pops of marks and things. And we're going to come get a little bit of white. And we're going to add some of those. Not everywhere, just to some of the places. Hmm. Where maybe, I guess uh, John would tell you what was happening on a gaseous level. Starlight is illuminating some gas in space. That's what John would say.
They would tell you the starlight is illuminating some gas in space. Yes, probably. And I, mean, I would say... It could be a slow-burning nuclear fire happening in space because of the gases have gotten close enough to cause a, you know, not full but cascading nuclear chain reaction in space, which does happen. So I'm just tapping my brush up and down. And what you may not be able to see, John really tries to capture this with a, ca a camera. He's pretty good at it. Is the fact that my brush is constantly being turned in my fingers. Right? So I'm recognizing that my brush makes this weird sort of little pattern. And then I'm like, ooh, that's convenient. And so <laughs> what I tend to do in those moments is just make, oh, I really like that one right there. That makes me super happy. Oh, yeah, it turned out really nice. It really did. I feel like that's almost bubble good. Yeah? I think so. I think it's that bubble good. Let me see if I can get some. What I probably can do in here, I can add some there. Maybe. Maybe I can add some music. I think so. There it goes. Oh, too many bubbles. <laughs> They're all over the palette. It won't hurt me, but it got away from me a bit. That's okay. So I'm going to add up here some of that kind of brighter bit of what was ever happening. Come here, Bubble Bubble. You can see bubbles all over my palette now. <laughs> the bubbles are everywhere. It happened. That would be, uh, the statement would be, bubbles happen. Bubbles happen. I'm going to tap a little bit There's right space here bubbles. Into that. I think it's just nice to vary it up and... Talk a bit about what you've got, you know, what you what you have, what you got going on. Get some of my white into this. And let's make sure we've got some of this kind of turquoise bit. And again, using the brush and its weirdness. But you can always go deeper into the paint if you've got to darken the color. See how I'm doing? Mm -hmm. So you're just making sure. And if I've got to soften it, I just come back through and look. Soften the bottom bit. So you've got a hard edge, right? And a soft edge. You know, it would, we could. We, we normally call our little bubbles Texas snowflakes, but... But they are Texas snowflakes. Well, with its change in weather, I mean... <laughs> we might having, actually have snow. We're actually going to get real stuff. I don't know. Texas never does really well when we get real weather. We kind of freak out. <laughs> <laughs> the South is resilient for some stuff, but weather ain't it. <laughs> Snow's not one. No. No. We can take 14 inches of water in a day... But you give us two inches of snow and everything is doomed. Like, literally, we're super calm as the house floats away. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Like, hey, look. Like, oh, I bought a boat. <laughs> it's a, that's just a, we that's can, just a living expense these days. We can say that because we live here. We can say it because we live here. And it's true. I mean, if you live here, we are a resilient community against rain. Just not snow. One snowflake hits the ground, and Houston is like, over. Like, we're closed for a weather event. <laughs> and so you can see where I'm blending, like where this goes over dry paint, you get a nice hard edge, but where it goes into wet paint, it gets you a nice soft edge. And we're just, oh my gosh, I'm loving this galaxy. It really turned out nice. I'm just, I could galaxy all night. I could galaxy all night, but I'll be good. And like, limit how much I feel like I've got to do. So while this is all having a rest and I'm having a think, yeah, I will grab um. Do, 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 do I have? Oh, I'll just grab a number eight cat's tongue. So this is a number eight art sherpa cat's tongue. You could use a filbert or a bright. It would be fine. You could use a big round that you had control of. You just want something that gives you a nice edge that you can work with. Because we're going to paint in. Can you guess? Can you guess what? I'm going to add a little white to it so it really shows up. I'm painting the moon. Watch me struggle with a circle. 
Oh, that's the thing. And John telling me that this is well, moon-ish. If it, moon adjacent. Well, you know, it's a it, it is a it is a large rocky object orbiting a planet, which is a moon. He just doesn't feel like there are moons. Uh, it look it, it could be our moon. It's a rebel planet moon. It's you know that's no moon. And really, it would be tiny in the sky. The Death Star, when you compare it to like how big it would be to our moon, it's tiny. It'd be a little tiny blip. The Death Star? Oh no, I think the Death Star was like moon size. No, it's very small. It's like um, I want to say it's like a tenth the size of the moon. It's very small. It's when you actually put the scale of it up there. It's not as. So I'm taking my phthalo blue, <laughs> and I'm just brushing out a circle for the moon. Don't challenge Star slightly... Wars facts. Huh? Don't challenge Star Wars facts. That's like real. Oh, I'll challenge it. I just didn't want our marital stuff to spill out on our show. <laughs> <laughs> Cause this is about to get deep, and you guys weren't, you know. I know it's a free show, and I was about to say you don't pay for that. You don't really pay for any of it, really. But you certainly didn't show up to see us like throw down over Star Wars. It could be Sailor Moon's moon. Oh, don't even start. So I'm gonna come <laughs> here, and I'm going to darken this side, and I'll start to kind of talk about the seas of the moon. I like to tap my brush up and down, creating kind of some uneven space. You can get a little white onto your brush and start to also show some of the space that is around this very dark moon which we're going to really highlight its crescent in a minute so that john can be like moons will never do that it's hard to say what thing but if you every time you say uh something will never do that in the universe the then universe it, proves then, you wrong. Yeah, it finds you one and says, really? <laughs> it's Honestly, a, like it's listening. <laughs> it's true. Okay. I love you, babe. I love you. Can you check on the little ones for me? I can. Thank you. Okay. I will I'll take leave some you. questions. I, I, I'll talk to everybody for a second while you're so, getting them. Here, I'll, leave I'll do you face with this. cam, and then we'll let this have a little rest anyways, because it needs to have a little rest, and I'll talk about what we're doing. I'll leave you with this. Okay, what? The, the Death Star has a diameter of 160 kilometers, and the moon has a diameter of 3,474 kilometers. Don't, don't muddle the conversation with Thank facts. you, Irene. I, I appreciate that. So I'll leave you with that and your lovely There's fans. There's no seconds. We didn't say that you could call in seconds, Irene. And don't worry, Irene. I'm not genuinely mad. You don't got to write me and be like, oh, no. No, we're fine. We don't actually like have like deep. We do have deep dork fights, but this isn't the stuff that uh, we have our deep dork fights about. Generally, it's about whether the Empire is the good guy or not in the series, because John seems to have a current argument going on that the Rebels were the bad guys and the Empire is the good guys. I'll let you ask him about that when he gets back. I, I primed him for you, babe. Heard. And just remember, Obi-Wan swung first. Oh, John has some theories, but we're going to get back to Peyton this moon. Yeah. No more corrupting the young Jedi. That's no sir. moon. <laughs> sir. <laughs> no more corrupting the young Jedi. So I'm going to continue <sighs> to, you know, just, I like to just tap the brush up and down and make, if you'll notice like irregular shapes. I like me some irregular shapes. So if I got in here, I'd want to put in a little bit of a light value. See that creates. Maybe the definition of some of those C's. As we come towards the outer edge, and I may even get into my fluid paint a bit just to improve flow. And we're going to do this crescent where it's sort of lit. And it gets a little thicker right there. We'll just bring this up the edge a bit. And that'll be what I'm playing with. Is this beautiful crescent shape? Are, you, are they discussing whether the Empire is the good guy? Oh, yes. Guy? It's, it's just, you know, you could just 
<laughs> I could have asked people political opinions and would have gotten a, a less response. Let's not find out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so everyone will be joining us on May the 4th as we celebrate Star Wars, I'm sure. Yes, which we will probably do on Facebook. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're starting to get that in, that process for that nice little glow. Now my, I have some stars, some focal stars, some star stars. These stars are the stars of my painting. And so I'm going to take a little bit of my turquoise and some of my white, as you do. And I'm going to come here and begin to do this glow. So there's the start of the glow. But the trick is, is getting these outer edges soft, if you know what I mean. I'm going to come back with a damp brush. Just make sure that I'm staying somewhat in a circle. Go figure. And just keep softening this as you would want to. I can also sometimes come back with one of my blending brushes and soften it out a bit, but that one's a little too damp and so it erased. If they're too wet, they'll erase. Mm. Go figure that you didn't know that. You might have known it. I might have known a little bit. You guys might have known it. You're just keeping that just, hammer. Yeah, I just got to keep those paper towels there so they'll do that. There we go. Uh, it's getting that glow. I really, really I love the glow around the stars. True. Soft pressure, as you can see. There we go. Glowing. It is a glow. That's what we want. We want those little star glows. Stars have glows. Don't you know? Let's do another little glowy star here. That one is just with the phthalo blue and a little bit of white. So the glow is happening, and you can pick it up and you can see it, but it's not as bright as this focal star. Mm. And I've got another big glowy star here, and I'm going to actually maybe play into the turquoise space. I took a little cad yellow over to my turquoise mix, warm it up, and I'm going to get quite a lot of white and a little more yellow back into it. I'm looking for a very specific bright range. And right here, I'm going to start to talk about that glow. And I may have to come back with my blending brush and even a bit more of my cad yellow to really speak about it. So you can see I'm kind of just dusting this paint around it, which you could just go there. But no, I say it shall blend out. just using this to soften some of that space around it. I can always put out more. See how we're doing? Yep. Exaggerating is okay. I'm going to make another little glow right here. Maybe another little glow right there. But let's definitely soften this one. I'm going to have teeny mops. I actually have smaller mops than this, just for this purpose. All right. That's a pretty soft light. Add a little bit of white into that light. When I put the star there, it's just super duper, duper soft.
I'm going to try something. I have a, a similar, so this brush is tackle on filaments. And this brush is tackle on filaments. <laughs> but it's smaller. So, but they're both about the same hardnesses. And what I was needing was something a little smaller that would let me work this area. And look what I got. So what this is, is a number eight crystal. I have a grip of these for watercolor classes that I teach. And I just needed something as soft that would blend. You know what the lesson of that is? Mm. There are a lot of brushes and tools that will do a technique. The best brush is the brush you use? The best brush is the brush you use. This is an inexpensive brush either, by the way, guys. Very inexpensive brush. So, you know, it's just about knowing what you're looking for. I took some cad yellow and I'm exaggerating that glow and I might exaggerate this glow as well. I'm going to rinse out. I've got a grip of these that I'll be now dedicating to my, uh, totally dedicating to this part of the studio where it's acrylic only. They've become that. I'm going to take this and a little bit of pink and white. There's a really cool effect up here. That I want to lean into. Get this in some white. Look at that. Some white. I'm going to come in just on the inside here. Maybe make another little ring so that they're sort of weirdly glowing around each other. And I'm just using my fluid white paint and a detail brush. This is a number one detail round. And this is sort of like a light halo that's glowing out of that star. How fun is that? I like it. While I'm here, I'm going to take my dotting tool. This is a two dot dotting tool. One big dot side, one small dot side. I'm going to take the big dot side. I'm going to come right here. Make a dot. Star. 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 Star, and then I'm going to flip over to my small dotting side. Go star, 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 star. Watch this. We are going to be starring for a second. Star, 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 star. So what will happen is you're starring out as you're dotting your little stars. They'll get smaller as you press out. Are you guys learning a little bit about how we paint space? Mm-hmm. You having some fun? I like it. I know you do. But we don't got to turn the cameras on live. So you, know, like, you can just watch it all day. And do. John sees everything all day. The 50 paintings that you guys don't see on the show. That I think are a good idea and then decide later. Are not a good idea. So I'm making little clusters. And I'm trying to create little big focal points. And exaggerating again elements that are in the painting. Because those are fun to do. Sometimes you load up and you're like, there. your star engine has just failed you. Mm. But I like that so far. I'm okay with that. I'm going to brighten the edge of this. I'm probably going to take a number four round. And I'm going to go ahead and load up with a little bit of my white. And I'm going to try to get a different angle so I have a better, more controlled angle about how I'm painting it. And just brighten this a bit. Any questions while I'm brightening the moon? What was that dotting tool you were using? 
So I have this Galaxy set and it comes with several splattering tools and a detail and this dotting tool. So like the splattering tool that looks like a toothbrush, a big little shaky rattly thing and this and that gives you small particulates, big particulates, controlled dots and a brush so you can do those. And but you this is really just essentially a two I don't even know what the real name of the tool is. It's like a I don't know. It's a dotting tool. It's a dotting tool. It's for nails. I think is is like where it came from is the nail industry. Now what white are you using? I am just using titanium white, but I'm using it from my golden fluid. If I wasn't using this, I could use my Americana Snow Titanium White. See like right there? Titanium white. Hmm. Similar. Same, same, right? If you say so. I say so. I do not have the say so's. You have none of the say so's? None. None of the say so's. Well, if you say you have no so's, I don't know what to do then. <laughs> Whatever shall we do if you have no so's? I'm going to take a little bit of my turquoise and kind of come to the inside of this and sort of give a secondary and a glow line. And then blend a little bit between these two. See? Mm. Creating that little glowing crescent is sort of fun. I like it. Now I'm going to dry this because to do my little sparkles, I'm going to need it to be dry so I can use my T-square. Otherwise, I, I just can't paint a straight line. So I'm going to show you how I paint a straight line. It's kind of a trick, but it works for me. And if it works for me, it probably work really well for you. So if you guys are uh, just painting, yeah, if you're drying that at home, make sure you thoroughly, thoroughly dry the surface so that when you're using the T-square or your straight edge and you start to drag it across the surface, it doesn't smear the paint. And that's what she's really concerned about. So. Uh, just make sure you thoroughly dry your surface, and that should be it. Other than that, thank you guys for coming and hanging out with us. It's kind of a weird evening show for us over here on Facebook. We love doing these sh the, the shows on the different platforms, so we're going to try to put some more stuff over here up on Facebook. We may post this up on YouTube a little later. It'll just depend on how things go over the season and what sort of uh, videos Cinnamon has planned to drop. Um, but if you leave a leave a comment down below, if you if you do need to uh, see this someplace else, or if you want to find out more about other videos that we have, you can check the link in the description down below. And of course, that uh, should have a link to our website, theartsherpa.com, where there's a calendar where she posts up uh, as much in advance all of the videos that we have coming up, and sometimes our schedule drops, things like that. You can find all that up there along with um the uh of course the project pages and then a couple minutes to cool because i'm like trying to hard dry it and i know the paint is pretty thick so are you using heat i did you're not supposed i tell I them no i'm i'm painting with pro paints though so they're pretty <laughs> resilient you're, you're just like do as i do not as i say you know what sometimes i get to cheat that, but that's because that's the you're truth of it paint. sometimes i get to cheat that's that's where it is i've been doing this a minute and sometimes in an unfair capacity, I truly get to do something that is not necessarily easy for everyone to do. I'm pulling out a couple edged brushes. All right. How are you guys doing? Good. Very good. Now let's talk about some things that you could do uh, if you didn't have um, one of the tools that I have. You could use the back of a detail brush to dot. Yeah. Uh, you could use a synthetic soft brush to blend it doesn't have to be a lot of times the brushes that are over in uh, the watercolor section um they're soft enough to do that type of blending and again if you're doing acrylic i say use tack on and the only thing that happens there is once you've kind of kidnapped a brush into your acrylic habit you don't put it back into your watercolor habit mm. right so there's a lot of ways to get through the sponging can be a really nice way to get up uh, clouds and things. You can do a lot with sponging. You can uh, do a lot with a lot of different techniques. I'm going to demo some more brushes. But when you're painting along with me, you know, what would be perfect for you to do is to look at your own paint box and figure out what you have that's close. 
And if you truly, genuinely don't have something that's getting you there, then yeah, you may want to consider to get a tool. But don't just go running out to get the tool just because I have a tool. Unless you've like tried all the tools and you're like, that tool worked really well. Then yeah, go get that tool. Because sometimes I find a tool is like, it's just kind of fantastic in an area. All right, next one. Next one. Next one. We're trying to be more it's Facebook. We're being chattier. Yeah. All right. Oh, you're asking for a question. I mm -hmm. was over here scrolling around making sure we've got things. Do, do, do. Let me go back up I'm here. also taking in the painting, deciding anything I want to change. Are you deciding? Oh, they were asking about color shift talk. Do, color shift scroll. is good. You know, it's a little harder for me to read the comments up on here Facebook. on Facebook because they scroll down on me automatically. You know, they we do, they like kidnap you and they go, Prrr, and you're like, what? And then it kicks you out of the chat. And then you're like, I'm literally having the cast and I'm kicked out. <laughs> you want me? Like, have you ever done that when you host a watch party and it like kicks you out of your own watch party? <laughs> you're like, well, I'm the host. What do you, okay. They, they were asking if you're going to be posting this up on YouTube afterwards. <laughs> no, I, I, there's no plans. It doesn't mean that we record everything and we store everything because we recognize all the platforms are super unstable. You can watch this off the website, though. Hmm. Um, generally, within a week of it being on YouTube, I will get it up onto the website, and it will have its own page, and I will share the link, and you can search it. You can go, there's 900 paintings. So at this point, we, yeah, the Art Sherpa, if you go to theartsherpa.com, there's like 900 paintings. And so if you go there and just search a word, a keyword, chances are there's three or four videos about it. Unless you search manatee or tardigrade, I don't have that yet, but I'm working on it. Mm. um sloth it's easier to say what i don't have it's like really easier to think of what i don't have i have space unicorn on fire that's true you There's do a lot of weird stuff that ends several up dragons happening. yeah and a beholder but facebook is letting me do some stuff you know um that is different mm. and i think in some sense more relaxed and maybe better for you as the student you'll have to give me feedback and go yeah i really like this vibe this is really working for me and it also lets us kind of put some different stuff out there, like to be able to put up in the morning and say, one of these three space paintings, you say what I do. Ah, 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 and then I do it. You know, I can do that on YouTube. But it's a little more intense. Yeah. And as you can see, I feel better. Right. Yeah. And plus the time slots, I, they get filled up too. Like, you know, sometimes it's hard to stream out on the platform, but here, like on Facebook, we're like, Woohoo! we can do it. So, uh, the, oh, and the other place you can find the videos is this page, believe it or not, has playlists. Hmm. If you're learning how to paint and you haven't done the Technique Tuesday playlist, please do all of it. Because I cover it from the place of, I haven't seen anything since kindergarten, like crayons were my last art supply. Like, we, we go back to, I don't assume you know anything in that playlist. I just, I'm just like, just explain everything. And it's all that beginner stuff and covers like lighting and the medium, like everything you need to know about acrylic paint, what you need to know about brushes, how to get a finer line, how to blend, how to do those things. So that's in there. There's a playlist for our full lessons. And this one will be immediately in that. It auto loads into that. So you can always find those there. And believe it or not, they have a search feature and I'm on watch. If you go to YouTube, Facebook, watch. You can follow our Sherpa on YouTube Watch. I'm on the little TV thing now. Crazy, huh? Crazy. And it's still free. And that's like, I'm always like, I got me, you know, I got to make sure that's all happening out there because you've got to buy art supplies. I'm going to show these guys how to do some lines. All right. So this tool is a T-square. And I get mine um, on Amazon or in Michael's. Just don't spend a lot of money on the plastic ones. <laughs> Because they're not worth a lot of money. Sometimes, like, if a bunch of people buy and they, they price gouge on Amazon, <laughs> it should be under five bucks. <laughs> so don't buy them for $20. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed that. Like, if there's a run on an art material, they just drive up the prices. So That's always crazy. check the price of something um, and make sure that you're getting a deal. Don't just assume anyone's honest. So I take my T-square and I put it exactly at the halfway mark of my dot. I come out a small space from the dot. I don't actually connect this next line to the dot. And I just make a line out. And I'm going to come make a line up. Wish me luck. And that gives me that. Very, very, very straight line. And come here. 
and then do a smaller version of that, very small version of that. These can actually come from the dot and they are very soft. See, they're very light and soft. And this is close to the edge there, so I'll just come from the other side. But this is how I keep those lines straight because for the effect to look correct, the line needs to be straight. See how I do? Yeah. Now I'm going to probably go like this because I want to really get this one. This one has quite a showy display. My first trick is to make sure I got this thing level. If you have a very steady hand, go for it, freehand it. It's just, as an artist, what I find is we all have strengths and limitations. You know, play to your strengths for sure. But if you recognize that you've got like an area where, you know, maybe that's not your, your winning side, don't just not do it, just find a way. That's what artists do. We find a way, and then we find a way to repeatedly do the technique. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know why I do an evil laugh when I succeed in star sparkles. <laughs> Too many just... Hanna-Barbera commercials growing up. It just makes me really happy. Oh, I loved Hanna-Barbera. There was some smart stuff in Chuck Jones. Oh, some of the Dude, art Chuck Jones did. I, I like want to go back and look at those guys again and like translate them into acrylic painting. Isn't this looking good? Now I'm going to come here and do the same thing. I'm going to come to the middle of the dot in my T-square, making sure that's level. And I'm going to make two lines going out. Go figure that. Well, I don't think I snuck it up on you. I'm going to kind of explain that's where we were going. So sometimes when I'm doing this brush stroke, I will lift the end. But I just come back with a clean brush and take it away. Brush it. You can erase. Sometimes people don't know that about acrylic painting. You can erase. You can remove lines before they're dry, and then after they're dry, you can paint them out. You're never really stuck. Isn't that gorge? Wow. And then we're going to get to do these fun little pine trees with the fan brush, which will go real fast. Like, all this has been, like, a very sort of thoughtful, uh, you know, a little process, but then it's going to go real fast. So I'm going to do these little cross lines look at that what love it come across this little fellow and again make some little level little bar lines That one got away from me a bit, so what do I do? I come back with a clean brush. And just make sure now. Don't ever feel trapped. You are not. Now I'm going to come above because I don't want to take my ruler through wet paint. And then for the last ones, I'll have to dry so I can do all the stuff there. But the reason I, I position this way is so I don't put my ruler over the wet paint on the stars. There we go. Sparkle, sparkle everywhere, right? Yeah. Just fun for me. Hopefully fun for you. Oh, 
They just look so twinkly now, don't they? Mm-hmm. Twinkles are fun. This one I'm going to give two kind of little twinkle lines, too. Lots of twinkle lines. Because, you know, it's extra sparkly. <laughs> so that's fantastic, right? Mm -hmm. Let me put, I'll clean this out and kind of put this to the side a bit. And then I'm going to put out the stuff I'm going to do for the trees. Those are going to be silhouettes, huh? Those are going to be just simple silhouettes. And so there's a lot that I can do for that. And I'm going to show you how I do that with a fan. I'm going to get a number four Art Sherpa fan. Um, you could use a bristle one. This is a silver stone, but you're going to have to remember that as you paint, these can get a little bit soft. So uh, you will have to keep the moisture out of them or keep a couple around so that they stay stiff because as soon as they get wet, they get mushy. This is made for acrylic paint is never going to get mushy. Ever. Mushy? No, sorry, Bob. It will not. If you were wondering, you might not have been wondering. You might have been like, yeah, I wasn't that really concerned with it. Now, these trees that are kind of behind there are not fully uh, all the way black. And so a way that I might get those done is to take my phthalo blue and maybe just a smidge on my black to darken it, but not all the way to black. And how you can do is you're going to come up. And I just come up the little line of the brush. And when I come up to the edge, I rock the brush back, handle down, and let the bristles begin to kind of open. And we're going to do upward facing little branches. Right? Because these had little upward facing branches. So let's do upward facing branches. I'm just tapping up and down. See how we're doing? Bring these down. These aren't like a little step ladder, right, guys? They don't have little rungs. They're kind of messy and bushy and full. And then as I come down, I can push harder. Look. How's that? And then I'll come through here and just push, 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 push. Giving that little bush texture. What? Yep. It's that cool. Let's put one here. We don't want to take out all of our uh, little trees. So, I mean, our, all of our little pretty paint work. There we go. A little pressing up. So these are upward facing, right? Mm -hmm. I'm on the edge of this. So you can be like this if you want to curve it. Or you'd be on the edge if you want them a little more stiff and straight. But it's still tapping up and down. As I come down here, I'm going to just definitely press down, filling that all in, kind of implying that little bush texture. And you can always bring a little branch up here or there. Fun stuff. Maybe another one of these not so dark trees right here and kind of come up. So the, this is going to create the sense of a silhouette, but a layered silhouette. Mm. How's everybody liking this tonight? This is really good. This is the way that you're showing these layered trees and the and the stars. Everyone's really enjoying this. Nice just evening kickback. Sometimes we need that, don't we? Just mm -hmm. an evening like chill out and enjoy. And I'll tell you what, after today I needed one. Now you can see I'm just tapping my little brush, kind of making these distant like look like little foliages. I love it. It's little foliages, and I just go, psh, psh, psh. and it's such a look. So when you get a normal kind of fan brush wet, one of the problems is is that it will start to. Um, I don't know if I have one of my really soft ones, but they become like the four fingers of. Uh, oh, this one's actually working really well. So that's why I was like, this is a pretty good one. But sometimes they'll start to clump together in little finger bits. I'll have to get one of the ones that come finger bits. But if you ever have that happen, that's a thing that can. This is a silver stone, so we can recommend that one. Mm. It's a bristle one. 
Maybe we'll make a little kind of distant in the foggy little tree right here. Okay. Just using the phthalo blue on the silverstone band, just tapping that in. And it goes tapward up. Just tapward up, 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 up. Take a look at that. That's not looking bad. Look oh, at that. Oh, it looks fantastic. This is really coming together. Now let's load up with our black and we got to find a couple perfect spots because we don't want to just overwhelm the surface with our silhouettes. No. Got to leave some room for the Ewoks to run around. I'm going to go over that star. I'm sorry. I just had to go. Sometimes that'll happen. You can always come back with a star, can't you? you can always put a star back, but you're just looking for the balance in the trees. When I get down here, I'm going to make some of these like softer, mushier. Okay, we're making foliage. Mm. Look at that. So the blue is kind of showing through. It makes it feel like light's coming through some of the trees. Very dimensional. It's dimensional. And it's a small bit of work for us to feel like we've got something dimensional going on. So it's worth it to us. Take that extra time. So I'm just tapping up and down and making this little tree. You know, it's definitely got a distinctive little tree shape, but it's a little bit lower. And you can kind of come up and make some of these little upward bows. And again, bringing that across there. See, I'm just tapping that and bringing that across. Super happy with this piece. I'm almost sorry that we're coming, like, it's going to be over. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Kind of on the edge. And see, when I'm trying to get small branches, I just work, I rock the brush back to just a few bristles. It's still the same motion. And you just think about each one, you know. And there's about four pines that you can paint with a fan brush uh, where their branches are maybe less regular, where they flow down, and where they go up. They have different sort of pine shapes. Mm -hmm. But almost all the conifers can be painted with a fan brush. And the fan brush does a darn good uh, palm tree and a couple good kind of droopy trees. I'll have to do a video on like all the trees that you can make with a fan brush and grasses and plants and bushes and things. Because there's a group of different ones. And I can just come forward like that. And that kind of creates maybe the top of a different tree that we're not quite seeing. These could be really high. And I can just tap this here. And you can see like I'm just making it sort of random. So it's not even like that solid yicky shadow. There, this, is like, this is like a night that you could be in. Dude, guys, I'm liking this. Me too. Sometimes, you know, when we're doing these, you're like, where is this going? It's going to the most beautiful place on earth. Your imagination. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, there's a bunch of, uh, this is, you know, there's a lot, this has been a really good chat. You know, there's a lot of good questions that have been put up here that'll be great for you to come back and catch in the replay. I would, I do try to come back and like catch the replay and catch questions. Um, sometimes, you know, maybe we'll even do like things if like it's hard to catch them on Facebook. Maybe I'll post up a, what are your questions for tonight? Mm. 
before so you so you've got some of those pre-curated out or i could just bring a device over here and catch them but what do you mean well because i'm not switching so i could just have a device and scroll because i have a little easier time with facebook <laughs> Oh. Facebook is not John's friend. Oh, yeah, no, I don't mind asking you the questions. I just, I know that sometimes when we're getting into uh, painting lessons, sometimes we don't catch all the questions that come That's up. True. And sometimes the questions Well, I've got are, a few minutes before we go. Well, if, if you'd really like to get into some of the deeper questions. I would got, love to get into some of the deeper questions. Well, Lynette was asking, Cinnamon, oh, do you think that Ewoks are evil? Yes. You do? That's not even a deep question. That's just observational fact. I, actually, I mean, if you're a human being, you're super evil. I was going to say, at best, they're opportunistic eaters. They're certainly apex predators. Well, that's, yes. <laughs> Anyone who missed that fact, <laughs> just, <laughs> that they were taking. That's a really cute apex predator. Considering they were going to eat the Jedi and were playing drums with the, with the helmets of the stormtroopers. Yeah, yeah. They've been, uh, they've been well fed. <laughs> and someone asked, well... How come nobody removed the Ewoks? And so could you? Uh, could you yeah. really though? I think they're pretty. They're pretty. Like yeah. I think that's a. You'd yeah. have to use the Death Star. They were there. To they were there anything first. About the Ewoks. I don't think the, they just worked around the Ewoks. That was like, yeah, they're they're a fact. So, yeah, that's that that turned out fast. Wow, you just like whoosh, put some trees in the tree. Yeah, there's a lot of nebula. It's like. Sky, 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 some stars. Sky, 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 a little bit of moon, a little bit of moon. Sky, 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 some more stars. Moon, 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 moon. Finish the stars, finish the stars, finish the stars. And then tree. Does someone painting well? But. I mean, like, the thing is, is, like, who doesn't want to... Don't you all have, like, this painting in your heart? I have a really cool trick for doing Aurora Borealis real easy in one stroke, though. Which is completely the opposite of this whole thing, which is, like, sky, 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 Layer, 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 sky, 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 sky. There are easy ways to do these techniques. They don't get quite the refined result that this is. But it's just all about seeing the different ways that you can get something done. And... You know, you're painting a nebula, it's pretty much the same as painting as a rock, as painting a glass, as painting a waterfall. Because for us, the artist, this is always going to be a flat surface with value and hue. That's, and we just use techniques and, you know, is it a hard edge? Is it a soft edge? What's the value? What's the hue? Those questions never, ever change, right? And then you, even if you're painting a rock, it's still just those things. It just feels like it's different things in your mind. I go for it. Hmm. <laughs> it's really pretty. It really is. It turned out it's really super pretty. I'm super bummed I didn't step by step it. Because <laughs> it would do so well as a step by step, wouldn't it? Maybe I can capture it in the video. You probably can. I hope so. Oh, <laughs> just don't really want to repaint it. <laughs> <laughs> lamenting your live conversation. <laughs> your live life. My live life. What are we lamenting? I don't know. Did you have to paint it again? Paint it again, Sherpa. Well, I got some other things going on right now. We've, uh, so, um, working on some new projects. Uh, if you follow the Art Sherpa Retreat channel on YouTube, they'll, they'll start over there, but they're actually going to also be shared here mm. and on Pinterest. So if you're in any of those places, you'll see them. And then uh, of those, the best ones will become lessons, full, full lessons that uh, we'll do on the channel or here. I'm going to keep dropping lives here. If you guys like this, I like it. If you enjoy learning how to paint here and you're cool with it and, and you enjoy these kind of groovier, weird little things, like I could drop a couple more spaces. Like I feel like a lot of people were super bummed they didn't get the deer. I would like more space stuff. I kind of feel like the deer should have been a unicorn. I don't know where that could go, but it could go somewhere cool. And once again, taking digital painting and turning it into acrylic painting, knowing those techniques that will let you translate it, that's a pretty cool thing. So if you guys want to meet me back and maybe do Dear Unicorn cool painting in the same color, since we've gone and gotten all these colors as it is. Mm -hmm. Anyways, out. We could meet back up. I'll post up when. What bat time, what bat channel. And of course, if you don't want to miss it, you could sign up for the texting system. The texting system? Just because we'll tell you. Another thing that you could do is you could like and follow the page and the system might notify you. 
It might. It might. <laughs> Sometimes YouTube will notify you. So depending on uh, if you don't want to miss the lives and you want to come chat with your friends and you want to paint along while we're live or just chat along and see the painting and then break it down and paint it on your own time. Either anything you guys want to do that helps you paint, I'm here to do. Mm -hmm. Feel free to share your results here on the page. You know, in the visitor comments post, I try to go by and check those a couple times a week and see what y'all have been up to. Um, you can come by if you like do not want your friends and family to see your post. You can just come by the Art Sherpa group uh, official and share in there. We're all very cool and we you can share as many tutorials as you want of mine. Any of any art as many as you want. <laughs> any day to 724. But we also have a bunch of art games and different posting days. So it's not just restricted to that. Um, and there's cool graphics and fun stuff. So there's always something going on. Uh, what else have we got going on that's fun and groovy and weird? Instagram is usually pretty cool. Hmm. Oh, newsletters. You should sign up for those. That's the other place that we tell you what's going on. Yeah, just join our world. website and you'll get the newsletter. That, mm -hmm. We send those out to everybody who's joined up there. And if you're a patron, you even get more specialty stuff because that comes out from our website. Because that's where I get really weird. That's Yeah. <laughs> that's that's where I'm like, none of the platforms would put up with any of this. And so like charcoals and watercolors and a bunch of weird other things that I also like to do that maybe wouldn't necessarily track, you know, for certain platforms, but are really fun between me and my students just to talk about art process and things. And those are very groovy. And there's a group for that where we get really out ATCs. If you like art and you would like to collect art, a fabulous way of doing that is artist trading cards. They're small paintings, two and a half inches by three and a half inches and like adult pen pals. You swap art. So you make a painting and somebody around the world, I don't know how many countries we're in now that we have a free swap war, they will get your painting and you can get somebody else's painting from who knows what country. It's pretty cool. So there's always something weird or interesting afoot in the Sherpa Dome. Well, if you need something to do, we probably have something for you to do. That's almost observer's bias there. Why? Because like saying there's something weird going on in the Sherpa Dome is like, there's always something weird going on in the Sherpa Dome. You know what's really weird? Huh. Is that we've been down here so long, we've started to call it the Sherpa Dome like it's a kingdom of... <laughs> <laughs> it's a collection of people so, who have come together. This is the kingdom together. of the Sherpa Dome. We do art here and it's all creative all the time. So, <laughs> yeah, that's the madness and mayhem that we're into. Mm -hmm. But listen, I hope this was relaxing. I hope you were able to put down some of your stress and worry from your week. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other, and I want to see you in an easel really soon. Goodbye! Bye.